So in this problem, we're going to be dealing with the numbers a and b as real numbers, and we're going to have a not equal to 0. And what we're going to show is we're going to show that if a is greater than 1 over a, which is greater than b, then a has to be greater than 1. And intuitively, this kind of makes sense. For instance, what if a was equal to 5 and b was equal to 0.1? Well, then 5 is greater than or equal to 1 over 5, which is greater than or equal to 0.1. So you can see there are certain values for a and b that this is obviously true. But we're going to show that a always has to be equal, or I'm sorry, greater than 1 for this to be true. First thing we're going to do is we're going to show that a is greater than 0. And sometimes showing variables are greater than 0 or less than or 0 is useful when you're working with inequalities, because when you're working with inequalities, when you multiply, you need to know how to handle the inequality. If you multiply both sides of an inequality by a positive number, you don't do anything to the less than or equal than sign. But if you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then you have to change the direction of the inequality. So establishing the sign of a number is sometimes a very useful thing, so you know how to manipulate the inequalities less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, those types of things appropriately. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this via contradiction. We are going to assume that a is actually less than 0. Okay? Well, if a is less than 0, that means b has to be less than 0 because one of our original assumptions was that b was less than a. If we look back up here, we have b, if you read it right to left, we have b less than a. So if we assume a is less than 0, that means b is less than 0 by our original assumption. So both a and b are negative. Let's go back to one of our starting assumptions. One of our starting assumptions was 1 over a is greater than b. Now I'm assuming that a is a negative number, so if I multiply both sides of this inequality by a, on the left side I get a over a, on the right side I get a times b, and because a is assumed to be negative, I have to flip the inequality from greater than to less than. So multiplying both sides of the inequality results in a over a is less than a times b, which simplifies to 1 is less than a times b. Now let's think of this. We know that a and b are both negative numbers, so their product is positive. So we have a positive, 1 is less than some other positive number. But b is the smaller one of these numbers, right? So I can actually, if I want to make this product bigger, I can actually grow it by multiplying by a. So I can make this thing bigger by multiplying by a. I've replaced the smaller number by a larger number, and it, so Going from AB, I only go up as I go to A squared. So actually what I have here, using our starting assumption, 1 over A greater than B, we've shown that A squared has to be greater than 1. Okay, so we'll kind of box that, and we'll use that here in a minute. Let's go back to our starting assumption again. The other thing we have written down is A is greater than 1 over A. So again, if I multiply both sides by A, I'm assuming still that a is less than 0, so I have a squared less than 1 because I have to change the side of the inequality. And now here's where I run into a problem because I have a squared less than 1, a squared greater than 1. And it can't be both of these things. You can't be less than and greater than the same thing. So we've encountered a contradiction. When we assumed a was less than 0, we ran into some math that didn't make any sense. So our a less than 0 assumption is wrong. So that means a has to be greater than or equal to 0. If you're not less than 0, you have to be greater than or equal to 0. But remember one of our starting assumptions. We said a is not 0, so actually what we have now is a is greater than 0. So we've established the fact that a is a positive number. So we're almost there now. Now that we know that a is a positive number, we can turn to our starting assumption a greater than 1 over a. If we multiply both sides by a, we get a squared greater than 1. a is a positive number, so I don't change the sign of the inequality. a squared is greater than 1, which I can rearrange to a squared minus 1 is greater than 0. I just move the 1 to the left side. And I can actually factor that as a plus 1 quantity times a minus 1 quantity. Right? That's a squared minus 1 greater than 0. So I can actually write this inequality as this product of these two terms. Let's think about these two terms. I need their product to be greater than 0. So I need a plus 1 times a minus 1 to be greater than 0. One way that can happen is if both of these terms are positive. A positive term times a positive term gives me a positive product. The other way that this can happen is if both of them are negative. A negative term times a negative term gives me a positive product. 
So I kind of think of those as cases one and cases two. Let's look at case one to start. In case one, I need both of these to be positive. I need a plus one to be positive. I need a minus one to be positive. If I simplify these by moving the ones to the other side, this means that I need a greater than negative one and I need a greater than one. So you combine these two inequalities, that says that a has to be greater than one. So we can save that piece of information. So a has to be greater than one. And then in case two, if we look at this, we see that this can't happen actually. Case two isn't gonna happen because this would require a plus one to be a negative quantity and a minus one to be a negative quantity. So it would require a plus one to be less than zero but this can never happen because we've already established that a is greater than zero. a is always positive. So one plus a positive number is never going to be less than zero. So the case two can never happen. a is always greater than zero. So following this path, using this assumption that a is greater than one over a, we've deduced that we must have a greater than one, and that is what we're trying to prove. Our starting assumptions have led us to the fact that a must be greater than one.